today's gospel is all about authority. Where does it come from? Who has it? And why? Now, the first thing to look at whenever you look at a gospel story is the placement of it. But there's two types of placement. The first one is where Jesus is physically in the story. And the second type is where is the story placed in the overall narrative. So, the first placement is Jesus is in the temple teaching and preaching to the people. And the religious authorities don't like it. Jesus does not have their permission to be doing this. So they are a little annoyed. What happened right before this story is also very important. Right before this story, Jesus and his disciples are walking on the road and they come to a fig tree that has no fruit. So Jesus curses the tree and it withers away and dies. Now you see, in that tradition, cursing a fig tree symbolizes God's judgment on all of Israel. It means that something bad is going to happen soon, some sort of punishment. Jesus, though, uses it not to show judgment on all people, but rather on the people who are so-called righteous. And this makes the religious leaders of the time very nervous, because as Jesus gains followers, they are losing their authority. Now, the temple is the holiest place that one could be. It was believed that God actually dwelled in the temple. That was where he lived. So to be allowed to teach in the temple was a great honor, a gift bestowed by God. So they asked Jesus, who told you that you could teach here? But Jesus doesn't answer them. He knows it's a trick question first off. Whatever he answers is not going to be good for him. So he spins their question into another question, and then finally a parable about two brothers. So what what is Jesus talking about here? But it all starts with authority. So think about authority for a minute. Where does authority come from? In business, your authority comes from what your job is, your position in the company, right? Authority is something that is given to us. It's bestowed upon us. Everybody has power. Power is the ability to do something or make something. Everyone can do that. But authority comes when that power is delegated to us from someone else. It is a power that is given to us for a certain purpose. Now, some authority comes from above, like at work. If your boss puts you in charge of a special project or something, you are given that authority. And some authority comes from below, which would be like when we elect a senator to make decisions for us about the laws. We elected that person, gave them authority. But the thing is, authority can be given, but it can be taken away. And it always can be questioned. As Albert Einstein wrote in 1901, unthinking respect for authority is the greatest enemy of truth. Everybody think for a second about something that bugs you or someone that really bugs you. We all have someone that bugs us, right? Think of someone or something that hurt you that you're still mad about, still angry about it. That person or thing has authority over us right now. It bothers us because we let it bother us. We're letting it control us. Have any of you seen the movie Labyrinth with the Muppets, David Bowie, Dance Magic Dance? Okay. (laughs) Great movie. If you haven't seen it, that's your homework for the week. Labyrinth starring David Bowie. Well, I'm not giving anything away, but in it there's a girl and she is fighting against the Goblin King, David Bowie. She wished that he would take away her baby brother because he was annoying, and he did. But now she wants to get him back, and he took him to the center of a maze, and she has to try to find him. And she can't figure out how to defeat this goblin king, 
as she moves through this maze, which is always changing. And in the end, she defeats him because she realizes he is only controlling her because she's letting him, because he's not real, right? She says the the famous line from the movie, you have no power over me, and he disappears. Now, in real life, it's not so easy to take authority away from people that hurt us or painful memories, but we can always try. That's where God comes in, right? If we let go of these things, we can have a clean slate, and the future will be open to us to assign authority to the things that we really want to have authority, the things that we need to have authority. Now, this is where we get to the parable, if you're still with me. The parable... We have one son who pays lip service to his dad and agrees to work in the vineyard, but then he doesn't actually do it. The other son refuses at first, but then he thinks better of it and goes and works. So why did he say no? Well, any number of reasons. We don't know. Maybe he got in a fight with his dad. Maybe he was tired from working the day before and he didn't want to go out. Maybe he had a hot date or something and he didn't want to dirty himself. Who knows? But after he thought about it for a bit, he realized that the right thing to do was to go work, and his future is open. He can go and work and change his mind, even though originally he said no. He still can respond to his father's request, his invitation, if you will, and when he does, he is fruitful. The one son agrees right away, yes is his dad to death, like we say, without actually thinking about what he is promising to do. And I, it's one of my major pet peeves when someone says they're going to do something and then they don't. The other son declines at first, but then he ponders and eventually turns around. And this parable is an invitation from Jesus to the religious leaders. And to us, Jesus is inviting them to rethink their idea of authority, not to blindly believe, but to really discern what they believe and what they want to do. The tax collectors and the prostitutes were considered the lowest of the low people, the worst people that you could ever meet in your life, outcasts. But Jesus offered them a chance to change, and they took it. So did John the Baptist. They questioned the authority of the people who told them that they were bad and that they could never be good, the people who had cast them out. And when they joined Jesus in his mission, the slate was wiped clean, and those people who had shunned them had no more authority over them. They were not just outcasts. They could actually change their lives. And then they saw that they were loved by God, no matter what other people told them. And we also can do the same thing. When we attribute authority where it should be, to God, to Jesus, Instead of to all the other distractions of life and the hard things that have happened to us in the past, we can move forward and be fruitful. So I'm going to end with a prayer that I didn't write. David Lowe wrote it. He's wonderful. I use him a lot. I'm sure you're sick of it. But here it goes. Let us pray. Dear God, We often allow things from our past to dominate our presence and close off our future. But you have promised that you love us no matter what, and so we offer our hurts, our regrets, and our resentments to you, trusting that you already know them and love us anyway. Help us to believe about ourselves what you believe about us, that we are worthy of love and respect, and help us to treat others as you have treated us, as those who deserve love and respect. And all this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross to show us the depth of your love. Amen.